This is gonna be a little bit of a boozy episode. <laughs> you're supposed to drink around the world when you're in Epcot. I need an adult. <laughs> hey guys, it's Adriana. We're here at Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. So I came dressed for the occasion. A little floral outfit. My socks are Daisy. Get it, Daisy Flowers. <laughs> We're at Flower and Garden. Nerd. It's Epcot's longest running festival. There's so many flowers to see and eat. I'm gonna try them all. This is Iconic Eats. Oh my God, the fashion icon, Miss Daisy herself. She inspires so many of my fashion choices. Three adjectives to describe Daisy. Feminine, flirty, fun, me. This is what Flower and Garden is all about. Look at all of the beautiful flowers. These are the natural colors of the flowers. It's so bright, it's so fun. Am I blending into the flowers? Do I look like a topiary? <laughs> Disney, make me my own topiary. We're going to trial and trellis first to get our snack and it's vegan. So I've had this dish before, but it's always good. I'm gonna wait till y'all see it, but it's uh, surprisingly meaty. Starting off strong, this is the boneless impossible Korean short rib from Trial and Trellis. This is a hot ticket item this year. It is impossible short rib with cilantro lime rice. There's kimchi in there and there's carrots, a lot of fresh flavors, but also this meat is completely vegan. If you are not vegan, please do not be afraid of this item. It tastes just like real short rib. If people are coming for a vegan option and they're not vegan, you know it's good. We have the chocolate cake from Trial and Trellis. Beautiful chocolate cake with mousse cassis, basically raspberry, and then we have some raspberry sorbet. I'm gonna try to get all of the flavors in one. Oh, that's a big bite. Should I go for it? Yeah. <laughs> raspberry and chocolate is always a good combination. The berry is super fresh. This chocolate cake is fluffy but also like really rich. I always want to eat the flowers and they do have like a bit of a bitter flavor, but it's a part of the experience. I'm gonna taste the flower. The flower doesn't have much flavor, but it's just a part of the fun because you're at flower and garden and then you get to eat the things you see. <laughs> this is the Twinings Energizing Matcha and Cranberry Green Tea. It has vodka in it. And energizing is in the name. I think it's gonna start me off real good. This is gonna be a little bit of a boozy episode. <laughs> so the green tea flavor is really light, but the berry punch comes through immediately. And then you get that little bit of lime in there. You cannot taste the vodka at all, which is dangerous. I'm gonna hold on to this for a little bit longer, but what's really cool about this is you can also get a version for the kitties. There is a non-alcoholic version as well, and I love the cup. It's a mason jar, so you can take it home. We love a drink that's also a souvenir. We're here at the Citrus Blossom. This is the grapefruit tart. It is obviously grapefruit, but there's also flavors of lychee, uzu, it's gonna be a lot of citrus, zesty flavors. I know Chelsea does not like when I say zesty, <laughs> but this is a zest bomb. You just called me out. <laughs> it's zesty? <laughs> yeah, no, it. <laughs> I would say that this is tropical, but I also think this would go really well with tea. Like this is a good, like, you know when like fancy ladies have high tea? as one would in this dress. I would like a nice like cup of tea and to like have this on the side. I think those flavors would go good together. Here's your tea. Oh my God, perfect. You drank that whole thing. Dude. There's no more, I'm so sad. You're supposed to drink around the world when you're in Epcot. This is the crispy marinated moho pork belly. Moho is a citrus marinade, makes sense for the citrus blossom. This pork looks extra crispy. There is an avocado crema on it. It also has cheese, corn, onions, and then these crispy plantain chips on top. Mm. There's not a lot of meat, but this is like a thick cut of meat. If you finish this, this will definitely be a heartier option. I know it looks like a smaller plate, 
but this is gonna fill you up. I wanna get all the flavors together. The salad's fresh. It goes good with the hardiness of the meat. But what I always like about pork belly is like, each bite is different. So there's crispy pieces, there's softer pieces, there's more fattier pieces. It's a lot of different textures. Chelsea, do you want some? Yeah. Okay, I don't want people to think I don't feed my camera woman. Last time I, I took all of the things from you. This time I'm gonna feed you. So here's your bite. Thank you. Your review, it's Chelsea review time. Great good. <laughs> She's like, thumbs up. <laughs> Wait, wait, we can't start in Canada. Wait a minute, are you a start in Mexico versus Canada girl? Yeah. Uh-uh, you're doing it wrong and I'm gonna show you the right way to do it. We have to start in Canada because that's where all the best drinks are. We end up in UK, we can go to Rose and Crown. But you can start with a margarita. No, you end with a margarita. Uh, fine. This is a controversial topic. Fine. We're doing it my way today fine. though. Strawberry feels refresher. Does this have booze in it? <gasps> you can add booze to it. Can I get booze with this one? This is the Strawberry Fields Refresher from Joffrey's Coffee. This is the Joffrey's in Canada, which I hear is the best Joffrey's. They're all different. Joffrey's is a Disney World staple. It's our coffee shop. We love it very dearly, and they have the best drinks on property, I think. I spiked my Strawberry Fields Refresher with a lemongrass vodka because we're drinking around the world, so it's boozy. Oh, this is caffeinated as well. Is it too much to have caffeine and alcohol at the same time? No. There's blueberries at the bottom of this. Blueberries, raspberries, obviously strawberry. I'm getting the berry flavor at the bottom. It's really sweet, but I taste that lemongrass vodka. Hmm. This is very similar to a vodka Red Bull, but instead of the Red Bull, you're getting a tea, they're getting that caffeine, but you're also getting your boozy kick. This is gonna be, um, maybe not good for me, but I'm gonna continue to drink it. <laughs> so this drink, non-alcoholic, is $5.99, which is a great price, but when you add the alcohol, it's only $13.99, which is still an amazing price for a drink at a theme park. And I can tell you right now from tasting this, it's gonna get you somewhere. We're at the Cider House. It's an Ireland inspired booth. This is the BLT scone. You've never had a BLT like this before. This is bacon, sun-dried tomato, all inside of a scone. There is a jam that you can dip it in. It already looks amazing. You can see those big chunks of tomato in there, but that's good bacon jam right there. Oh, it smells so smoky. All right, let's try it. The basil flavor is strong. The bacon jam is the best part. It's sweet, it's smoky. I wanna dip it in the scone all day. Everything we've been doing today is very tea and biscuits. Oh, share the wealth. There you go. Wait, you have to try. Let me get you a, a good dip. You had oh your sip God. of tea, now try your scone. I can't pop. <laughs> Never been to Flower and Garden. This is definitely gonna be on your list this year. If you've been to Flower and Garden a bajillion times, this is still gonna be on your list this year because it's so good. There's no way we can go to the Cider House and not get a cider. This is the Bold Rock Watermelon Cider. I love cider. I'm not a beer person. I like how sweet it is and bubbly. It is refreshing. You do feel like you can sip this whole thing down and just feel better and cool off. We're three drinks in? I don't know. I think we're three drinks in. We're three drinks in, I'm already feeling it. We ain't even made it to France yet. Oh no. Oh no. I need an adult. <laughs> no, that's what I love about Epcot, because it's just like so fun. A lot of people are like, oh, what do I do in Disney if I'm an adult? Well, first thing, you go to Epcot and you go to a festival and you drink and you eat around the world. You have a very fun experience and it's like you're a kid again. And no one can tell you no. I mean, unless you have Chelsea here. She's not gonna tell me no, though. <laughs> so cute, look at him. Winnie the Pooh is my spirit animal. My favorite Winnie the Pooh song is, I am short, fat, and proud of that. And I mean, like, that just describes me. <laughs> He's so cute. All right, we're heading to France, but look, it's so pretty. France is my favorite pavilion. And I might have lied, because we're going to go get my favorite 
drink. Let's go. One of my favorite things about Epcot is like, this is the adult part. So around four o'clock, like you'll always hear a mom just going in on her kids. She's like, this whole week was about you and today is my day. I'm gonna have a good time. She's completely drunk, but she's living her best life. And her kids, they might be in the way a little bit. <laughs> I keep saying that France is my favorite pavilion, and it really is. We have the Beauty and the Beast topiaries behind me, which is perfect, because Beauty and the Beast was my mom's favorite movie. So I feel very happy right now. This is the Le Vion Rose Slush. This is the most popular drink in Epcot. It's a classic, it comes back every single year. People rave about it, it has this beautiful rose flavor. The slushes change with each season and so when Flower and Garden comes around, everybody's excited about the rose flavor. It's so boozy. You get the rose flavor, but you also get the alcohol right off the bat but it's frozen, so it just goes down real smooth. Chelsea, come get me later. This is the croissant au fromage de chèvre. It is a goat cheese stuffed croissant. I mean, it's bread, it's cheese, it's France. You can't go wrong. Oh my God. Okay, so you know how like goat cheese has that sharpness? It's garlicky, the sharp goat cheese on the inside and then that buttery croissant. Is this my Emily in Paris moment? We could just call it Adriana in Paris. No, this is definitely gonna soak up a lot of that alcohol I just drank. <laughs> we were supposed to leave France, but they have a creme brulee beignet. The beignet caramelisé, it is a salted caramel filled beignet with a creme brulee top. The top is so crunchy. The inside is salted caramel, but it's cold. So the top is like that caramelized, burnt sugar flavor, and the inside is this cold, salted caramel cream. This is honestly <laughs> the best beignet I've ever had. And I like that it's different than a regular beignet. Like the regular beignets just have like powdered sugar on them and they're just fluffy and pillowy and doughy, but this really has like a France, spin on it like what's more classic France than creme brulee and caramel we're at the Isle of Fresca this used to not be a permanent kiosk but now it is this is the tropical breeze it's lemonade grapefruit and simple syrup I'm gonna add alcohol to it we got the non-alcoholic version I need to take a little bit of a break I'm expecting this to have some tropical flavors I am transported to a tropical island it's lemonade so it's tart but you definitely get the grapefruit flavors the simple syrup sweets it right on up. So it's a slushy texture. It's very similar to the rosé that we had before. Um, so like they kind of like make it in a slushy machine so it doesn't, it's not like blended ice and then liquid on top. It's like the flavors are all blended together in the ice. It's a refresher. It's really smooth. It's a good way to cool off. I need a spoon to eat this. <gasps> Is this a spike spoon? So cute. So Spike is the mascot of Flower and Garden. He's the cutest bee ever. What I like about the Spike Spoon is it's one of the cheapest souvenirs you can get. It's only $2.50. So what I like about this Trace Leche cake is it's made with plant-based milks. So it's not gonna be super heavy like Trace Leche can be. It's made with oat, almond, and coconut milk. This cake looks super fluffy and rich and moist. You get the coconut flavor right off the bat. It calls back to the tropical flavors of the booth. And I think this is really good if you want to do a dress leche chase cake, but it not be super heavy. Up next, Morocco. This is the flavors of the Medina flatbread. It has za'atar, it has mozzarella and feta. I see artichokes, I see olives, lots of spices on it. I mean, we're in Morocco, so of course you gotta have spices. Let's taste it and see what it's like. This is so flavorful. The flatbread is so crispy. So there's all that seasoning on that flatbread. It's oregano, thyme, cumin. You see those sesame seeds. It's so crunchy. And then all of the vegetables on top are so filling. There's artichoke, there's olives. Morocco is infamous for having the most flavorful food in, in Epcot. It is very accurate to the flavors that you would get at like a traditional Moroccan restaurant. I love this flatbread. 
I think it's a great lunch option, especially if you're looking for something different in Epcot. It's a cute camel. Would you like some flatbread? No, you good? Okay. We're here in the America Pavilion. This is the spicy chicken gumbo. We're hanging out with Spike. He's hidden inside the topiaries, which is one, something that's really fun. Here at Epcot, you can walk around the pavilion and look for Spike. You can get a map at the beginning of the showcase, and then when you find all of the Spikes, you get a prize at the end. That is spicy. Oh, no. That is spicy. <laughs> the flavor has arrived. It's wild rice in here, scallions on top, obviously chicken, and dewy sausage, I'm pretty sure, and it is very spicy. Is it a five alarm fire? Yes, this is probably the spiciest item I've ever had here. It's really hot. So if you like spice, I would go for the gumbo. If you don't, go try something different here in America. It's very spicy. And I'm like, not a non-spicy girl. Like I can have spicy things. This one, it's a, it's a no for me. <laughs> I'm ready for beer and pretzels in Germany. All right, we're in Germany. Of course, we had to get beer. This is the beer flight. I love a flight. You get three different beers for one price. It's $10. Comes with this cute little card. Walks you through each beer. The first one we're going to try is the MIA Brewing Hugo. It is from Doro, Florida. One of the cool things about Epcot Flower and Garden, Epcot in general, is that they normally have a beer that is local. Um, so even though this is a German inspired beer, it is from Florida. Oh, it's super refreshing, it's super light. I'm not a beer connoisseur, but I mean, if this is a, it's a cold beer. You can't go wrong with that. Try it for me. My beer lady. Uh, it's like a lager. All right, let's try the second one. This is a Bitburger Medium Pills. This one is actually from Germany. It's bitter at the end. What I do know about beers is I don't generally like bitter beers. Like I want it to be sweeter. I want it um, to have like a super light flavor. This one's a little bit bitter on the end, but I'm pretty sure somebody who's really into beer would like this one. This is a good like summer beer. So these two for you, but I think this one is for me. The Steigl Brewing Rattler Raspberry. It is from Salzburg, Austria. Rattlers generally are like half lemonade, half beer. They're fruitier. This one says raspberry. I can smell the raspberry. Oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna drink this. I'll let you taste this one, but I'm gonna finish this one. Oh, no way, that's way too sweet. I love flights, like I said before. If you wanna try like a little bit of everything, you wanna try the flavors of Germany, I recommend getting a flight. We're still in Germany. We can't leave without getting some form of a pretzel. This is the toasted pretzel bun. It has black forest ham and Gruyere cheese. She is extra cheesy and this, oh, this bun looks soft. There is a sharpness to the Black Forest ham. The Gruyere cheese is creamy. The flavors go together really well. And of course, pretzel. Pretzel is so good. Uh, we're not going to gloss over the fact that all of my lipstick is on this food. Uh, apparently, women eat seven sticks of lip lipstick a year. Um, I probably double that. <laughs> <laughs> so the cheese on the outside is like melted cheese. But on the inside, it's like super creamy. It's really salty, I would like my beer. Thank you. We made it to China. We haven't tried anything in China yet. When you're traveling the World Showcase, you gotta try something in every country. So let's figure out what we wanna eat here. This is the Tang Dynasty. It's tequila, rum, pina colada, strawberry. It has a whole lot of stuff in it. And then there's boba popping balls at the bottom. It looks super refreshing, super icy. Really strong coconut flavor. I am mistaken, these are not popping balls. These are just regular boba, so they're kind of chewy, and I love the chew at the end. This feels like like a party punch. Like it has a lot of everything in it. It's super fun and cold, and I love the color. It matches. It matches. 
This is the spicy mala chicken skewer. I'm so excited about this. It's all over the internet right now. Everybody is going crazy over it. It's street food. It's chicken from the Lotus House in China. It has this sauce on it. Scallions, sesame. I like portable food too. Mm. The chicken is cooked perfectly. It's seasoned well. It's a little spicy. So it has Szechuan peppercorns in it. The spice level is definitely there. Not as spicy as the gumbo in America. You can definitely like walk around, eat this, and get like the good spicy flavor without like burning your tongue. Little cultural reference here. Ma means to numb and la means spicy. So it's a numbing spicy chicken. Cool myself off with my Tang Dynasty. I'm gonna say something controversial yet brave. This might be the best drink I've had all day. Ooh, she's strong. I think this is the best drink in all of Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. I said it, I know people aren't gonna agree with me, but I like it. We're ending off in Mexico, this is the Jardin de Fiesta booth. I have the Tacos Vampira. It is barbacoa covered in this beautiful sauce. Is that cheese on the shell? Mmm. I've had homemade, like authentic barbacoa, and this is the real deal. And we kind of looked through the kitchen a little bit and I saw them making it and they looked like they knew what they was doing when they made this taco. This taco is a star, but that is not the reason why you end in Mexico. I am going to show you why you end in Mexico. This is the poppy flower margarita and the entire reason why you end in Mexico. I am so excited. You gotta end your day with a good margarita. These are the best margaritas on property. This margarita has hibiscus, cucumber juice. It has a smoky, spicy rim. We don't need a straw because you need a little bit of that rim when you sip. The cucumber is the first thing you taste. Super fresh, melony flavor. And then the salt rim, that spice salt rim is melting on my tongue and it's giving me like that salty, lemony tang that you want to go with your margarita. All my margaritas, I do not want salt on them. I want whatever this rim is. It is so good. Look how pretty it is, mm. it matches your hair. It does match my hair. We ended our day in Mexico, as we should have. I have the best margarita I have tasted in this whole entire place. It's a great Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. I will see you guys on another day at another park for another adventure. Bye! Would Daisy get this lit? She might, she's sassy like me. But Donna would. <laughs> Bye, spaceshipper.